day that it was officially announced? Oh, we had known. You know, uh, I guess when I first heard it, uh, obviously frustrated, and uh, you know, it's it's just like you're a parent. I mean, you're dealing with a situation where you've got a player or a child that, that you know you, you want to stand up for what's right, and it didn't go his way. Uh, and you can argue to your blue in the face. About the system and whether it was fair and whether it was not fair, and all you're going to do is just sit here and go round and round. And what could he do about it? You know, you don't know. Um, and then, and then you know, you let him vent some, and obviously you can vent some. But you know, at the end of the day, uh, you got a student athlete who's, who's uh, going through a, a tough deal, and you know, you gotta you gotta embrace him, you gotta love him, you gotta let him, you gotta let him. I guess vent to some of that, and then uh, you got to get a plan with him, and, make, and you know he knows you're in the foxhole with him. With your other two guys, your two freshmen, like what was your a plan of attack this summer, knowing that you're going to have to have them ready to play this? Oh, well, you know, that, uh, part of that is you know they've got to spend some extra time and get as brought up to speed and in the playbook as he can. So that's going to require you know both of them being here, which they were, and then on top of that, they've got to. A lot some time in the evening, not only get the film and volunteer himself to, to get caught up. So, uh, and they both done a good job. So we look, I look forward to, to getting storm with them in a couple weeks and, and and see where they're at, and then go meet them where they're at and bring them to where they got to get to. And uh, that's going to be a fun challenge. And that's what I kind of look forward to. I imagine it's going to be fun to see how where Jalen's progressed or not. Yeah, that's going to be really fun. And then uh, obviously Dave, you know Davis, and then obviously J.C. Shaw. You know, look forward for him getting a, uh, to, to see how he, how he reacts to it, being a leader, see where he's at that way. He's done a good job. Uh, you know, I don't know where that's at right now. You know, he's he's he had some knee surgery back uh, a couple months ago, and uh, he's been here this summer rehabbing his knee. But uh, I don't know if there's been anything official yet. Okay. Either way, it's worse. Come back to DK for a minute. He, he's taking a lot of pride in himself. Yeah. Like, he's taking a lot of roles. My guy. On this team. I mean, you know, he's a, he's, he's a good athlete. Have you been to a game when he touched that ball? I, I've seen him. Okay. <laughs> I mean, what well, is I mean, it about his makeup? You know, he's, he's a little bit, you know, like I said, you know, he, he's a little bit, I like him in the fact that he's a, a little bit of a risk taker. He's not scared to fail. That's what makes him really a good corner. And that's what makes him really a good wide end. You know, if the ball doesn't come to him, it's not the end of the day. Uh, and when you watch him at corner, he jumps over there and, and he, has an, uh, he has confidence in his ability. And when he does get beat, it's not the end of the world. He's kind of, he kind of lets it roll off his back and gets back in there. And in and, and today's kid, I mean, that's just a lot of them. Dealing with failure and ups and downs and how those kids react is huge. That's huge even with my kids. But in today's kid, that's a big part of it. And he has an innate ability to compete. He likes to compete. You want to play tiddlywinks with him today? He'll play you. And he wants to win. And I think that's probably one of, the, one of his, I guess if there's a hidden trait within that kid, I think that's it. You know, he likes to compete, he likes to win, he doesn't always win. He's not always successful. But you know what, he wants to line up and do it again. He wants to get it right. And I think that's what kind of makes him, as a coach, you're like, hey, give me that guy. You know, if I, if I had one trait to say, hey, what do you want in a player at any position? Give me the kid that's a competitor. Give me the kid that wants to pull over and get sick when we lose on the bus before I do. You know, that's the kid we really want. And that's I, I think he embodies that, to be honest with you. Sorry, you talked about it, but what do you want to see from Jalen? Jalen, I want to see him see him improve some from the spring. Obviously, he came with us, uh, he's been here through a, through a spring practice, he's been here through a summer. Uh, see how much he's retained. Uh, see what type of shape he's in. See where you see where he's at mentally, 
and see how much we can do with it. What were you most impressed by what you saw from him in the spring, and what does he need to work on? You know, obviously, I think just getting here, I think the change from leaving home was big. You know, a lot of times, you know, not only the media, but fans or people in general, you know, don't realize these are these are 17, 18-year-old kids who just left home. You know, it's and it's a transition. Some people transition, you know, could have left when they were 12. Some people could have left, you know, still would want to stay at home. So, I mean, that's a huge part of it, being a student athlete. How does he handle the schoolwork? And, you know, he's done everything we've asked him to do since he's been here from that round. And so I need to see him continue to grow, continue to learn uh, football-wise. And then all of a sudden, once he has some success, build on his confidence. Build on that. Build on, you know, not only a successful block, but a successful in, in, in being able to run routes and catch for us. Obviously, he has a ton of raw talent, but are you, in the spring, did you just kind of start seeing him become a little bit more polished and maybe in terms of route running? And you know, I don't know if we ever got there in the spring where I could say he was – Obviously, he was better in practice 15 than he was in practice one. Uh, how much further he's got to go, he's got some, but he's got to have, have you know, go far enough where he's got confidence not only in himself, but you know, that he's, that he's best one of our best 11 we can put out there. What, what about Davis Allen? What, what, are, you, what are your expectations? Oh, he's going to get an opportunity. You know, he's a he's a freshman, good-looking kid. You know, he's 235 pounds, six four and a half. Runs good, good. At it. You know, I would say probably his. If you really watched him, he may be the best athlete of the bunch. He was a, a really good high school basketball player. He was a really good high school baseball pitcher, uh, and uh, he, he's a good athlete. So I'm interested to see where where he's at after being here in second session summer school, and then to see where we can get him uh, for the first couple games. What about J.C. Chalkin, where he's at right now, his development? You know, J.C.'s been in our program a couple of years. You know, he hasn't been called upon to be the starter. And now, we're, you know, he, he's he's earned that right uh, this spring and this summer. And he'll be the, you know, kind of the league dog going into fall camp and see, see how he can do as far as holding that role. Excited about his opportunity. You know, he's been a, he's been a backup player for us so far. Uh, it'll be interesting to see how he – handles the role of being the star. Who's the guy that's going to be the leader in that room? Malone Richard was a guy that was kind of outspoken, was yeah. the leader in that room. I would say J.C.'s got to take that role. J.O. <clears throat> Banks is an older kid. It's been, you know, been around the block a little bit, the fact that he's a, you know, older in age, uh, being a transfer kid. So those two guys will probably be the leader starting out. What about JL? What have you seen in him since he's transferred over? And does he have you know, a role? It, JC, JC or, or JL will have a role for us. You know, he's a tough kid. He's a pretty good blocker. Uh, and uh, he'll have a role for us somewhere on this football team. Are you still with the special teams? Yeah. Talk to us about your special teams coverage. You need to know what was the big change last year that you guys seemed like it was much better? You know, Sam, with touchbacks we had? Yeah. You kick that ball out of the back of the end zone, you ain't got to cover it. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's part of it. Is 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 BT Potter's success and kicking it off. Yeah. Uh, but you know, coverage units are, are a daily must. It's kind of like shaving, or it's kind of like anything you do on a daily basis. Is you've got to be solid in a lot of areas. It's like fitting a run defensively. We've got to have those gaps closed. We work extremely hard at it. One of the things that, that's that you get used to with with a kid like BT is is. Uh, you get used to him kicking in the end zone, and you and you let down and no cover, and so you've got to assume everyone's coming out, and you got to deal with them like that. But you know, those kids obviously. And then the other thing is, if you look at it, the kids that were on that unit had been on that unit for three years. They were puppies three years ago doing it. They became older. They became really schooled at it and good at it. Took a lot of pride in it. And that's kind of how they got better. What does it say about a player like Xavier Thomas to be on that squad and to, to take off downfield and move the right to Spain? And that's a big old field. athlete that can run, ain't it? Yeah. You know, he's a – you know, I think as the season progressed, we all knew, you know, you, you just kind of start off with a kid that's a freshman like that and you've got a big old raw talent that can, that can help your football team. And so you find a, try to find as many jobs that he can handle. Mentally, that's not going to hurt your football team. And a lot of the weight that carried, especially early in the season, was with our special teams. He was on kickoff return. He was on punt. He was on kickoff coverage. We used him in punt return. And then, as his role, as he started making plays, 
and get in and make it defensively, started playing a lot. Is it an unwritten rule or a written rule that the players run through the end zone after that's the one of our That's one of our trademarks. We want to make sure that we cover all the way down. Yeah, we see it when they're running right out. Yeah, we want, to, we want to make sure we cover all the way down. We give them a loaf if they don't. Yeah, I figured that had to be good. Do you use that um, that South Carolina State play, you know, when the guy dropped it, handed it directly? You oh, use that wow. as a teach tape for yeah. a while? Yeah, we use that. We used the one at Arkansas where the, where the punt returner kind of stood there a minute and then took off around left. I know that happened a couple years ago, too. Those are always things that, that we kind of try to cover in August camp. You may have already covered this, but big picture-wise, do you see any surprises coming into the summer? And uh, at tight end or special teams? Which at one? tight end. At tight end, no. We, we, we got what we got. You know, obviously, uh, uh, Braden's got his situation, which is what it is. Yep. And then uh, you've got J.C. Chalk, which is kind of the leader of the group. We've got two unknown with two, two really talented freshmen in Jalen Lay and Davis Allen. And then you've got two kids in Luke Price and J.L. Banks. So you've got some candidates, and uh, we look forward to seeing that shakes out. Any of them looking uh, 